Horror Man back for another review. <laughs> hey guys, uh, so Toy Fair just wrapped up um, in New York just a couple days ago, um, and I just wanted to kind of go over some of the cool stuff that we saw from that. Um, so I just want to go over basically like the honorable mentions, uh, the stuff that's really good, and the stuff that's really not that good. So. Um, just wanted to go over a few things. So I put together a couple videos. Um, I wasn't actually there myself, um, but toyark.com was cool enough to uh, let me use some of those photos. So first we're gonna go over some of the honorable mentions, uh, basically little subjects and a couple other ones. So check this out. So taking a look at some of the standouts from the little subjects booth, uh, here is the Predator line, which is new from Little Subjects. Now this seems to focus mainly on Predator 2. Uh, you can see a lot of the human characters in there, such as uh, Harrigan, uh, of course played by Danny Glover. And um, it's a pretty cool looking line. I mean, the paint looks really good on these. I like the different designs. You know, you have a ton of different variations of uh, Predators. Uh, if you do remember the movie at the very end, there was a few uh, different predators that were surrounding Danny Glover, so we might see some of those in here. Um, so pretty cool looking line. The next one was something that was unannounced, which um, is the Ghostbusters. We haven't seen anything from them so far. Um, and you basically have the original Ghostbusters, you have the main four, and you could tell by looking at the, act, uh, the actor likeness of uh, Dan Aykroyd that they actually do have some kind of the likeness rights with these. So we haven't really seen that with little subjects. Uh, they usually just kind of have basic looking faces, but these are actually actors' license, uh, likenesses, apparently. Uh, cool looking slime right there. And then the last thing was just a big assortment of uh, horror figures which should be shipping soon in various different licenses. So if you're looking for some really cool vintage stuff, Super 7 has definitely got you covered. Uh, what you're looking at here is some very vintage inspired Halloween buckets which look really cool. Uh, you got the mummy, Frankenstein, creature and the wolfman, so pretty neat looking stuff. And then you also have this really neat looking line of their reaction figures, which you can see Hellboy here. Uh, you even have the horned Hellboy and a Cronin, which is in that officer uh, Nazi garb, which looks pretty cool. Um, but Master Universe is definitely their big license this year, uh, and the same really with last year. And you can see they're doing their vintage inspired line, but they're using those filmation designs, so pretty cool. And then speaking of Filmation, they are continuing Mattel's Filmation line. You can see Pordak. Uh, but they have so many different figures on display, so you definitely want to check that out if you're a uh, Mass Universe fan. Super 7 has definitely got you covered. All right, so Little Subjects has some pretty cool stuff coming. Um, mainly they're going with the horror stuff, which was really big. Um, there was a ton on display. Unfortunately, you couldn't get really good pictures of everything. Uh, so that was a quick picture, so sorry about that. Um, but you can expect Pennywise, Friday the 13th, Night Run Elm Street, um, The Exorcist. There was a pretty good amount of stuff in there. Um, I like the little subjects a lot. I've got some really cool stuff from them, especially like the Ninja Turtles, uh, you know, collectibles they did, and a few other lines. Now the one thing I'll say is that the paint doesn't look that good on some of those Friday the 13th ones, which is a little disappointing. Um, so I'm hoping that they kind of adjust some of that stuff. Since you couldn't get pictures, maybe they're kind of uh, tweaking it a little bit. Uh, the Part 2 Jason didn't even have an eyeball, so it's kind of, I don't know, the paint's not that great. Uh, but some of them look really good and I'm interested. If I had one thing to complain about Lowell Subjects, I wish they would pack everything like just let us see what we're buying I don't I don't really care about blind box man because I'm gonna end up buying most of them on eBay anyway because I can't you know spend $13 a piece on a blind box it's just it's hard to do and uh, you don't always get what you want <laughs> you almost never get what you want so um, but it sucks to get doubles when you pay 13 bucks a piece um, so they also, in one of those videos, I had uh, Super 7, they've got some really cool stuff coming. Uh, again, if, you know, if you're a Massive Universe fan, you're probably going to be, you know, all about Super 7 this year. they got some really cool stuff going. Um, 
I really like that little Hellboy uh, reaction figure set. I haven't bought a lot of those, but I don't know. Sometimes they make some cool stuff. Um, so another one that I didn't really even do a video uh, with pictures of is Mattel. Um, I've been kind of hot and cold on their stuff, but they got a lot of Jurassic Park stuff. So I think if you're a Jurassic Park fan, you're going to probably uh, dig their stuff this year. Um, it definitely blows away the Hasbro stuff, I can guarantee you that. Uh, but there's a ton of Jurassic Park stuff coming. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and talk about some of the not-so-great stuff this year. And it's not really stuff that um, is terrible or anything. Um, it's just maybe the interest is going to be a kind of select market. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at DC Collectibles and Playmates Toys. All right, so onto the DC Collectibles display. Um, you can see that they're actually doing a whole line of uh, vinyl figures, is what they're naming them, basically statues of uh, some different artist alley artists. You can see Chris Uminga featured here, and it's a pretty cool idea, and I think it's cool that they're recognizing uh, you know, artists from Artist Alley. Uh, also, you have the Gerard Way statues. You can see there's the Joker right here. Batman was on his left. Um, and then they are continuing their garage line, which you can see Super, Supergirl here. And then also Batgirl, so the Gotham City Garage statues are basically like, uh, you know, women on these different motorcycles. It's one of their own ideas. Pretty cool. Um, then there's the Rick Baker Joker bust, which will be limited, but it is uh, sculpted by Rick Baker. So pretty wild looking. Um, for figures, you do have the DC Essentials, which are basically restarting another 7-inch line of figures, uh, some of the basic characters to start. Then there's also the DC Bombshells line with that uh, Joker and Harley, kind of a recreation of that statue. Uh, pretty decent looking, it's always saw from Bombshells. And then of course, the only thing there for Animated Series line is kind of like what we've already seen. So here we're looking at the Harley Quinn Expressions Pack. And you can see she has a bunch of different various faces and accessories. I really like the unmasked face and some of the other ones. Uh, and she had like the fish. Um, and then you could just see the Joker and the Batman and the Harley next to each other here. So not too much from the animated series line, unfortunately. Alright, so Playmates Toys, of course, um, had a very big booth as usual. And it's all Ninja Turtles. Now, if you follow the last cartoon, the CGI version that started in 2012, that just ended. So Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is here, and Playmates is all about it. Um, so basically, all we're going to see from them is going to be stuff from this cartoon. So here is a look at the basic assortment. You can see the four turtles with their redesigns. And then you have a couple of uh, various characters in the back, which are some kind of ninjas. They're not necessarily foot ninjas. Uh, one of them is actually called an origami ninja. Uh, then you have a character called Meat Sweats. Uh, and then, of course, you have April and the Splinter in the back. Um, but yeah, the designs are really weird. Um, the weapons are changed. I mean, these, some of these things could change, but the design changes are probably not going to happen. And obviously you can see there's a completely uh, redesigned uh, April O'Neil here. Um, and then just taking a look at the ninja, he does have a foot on his face, like a foot print or whatever. Um, but he is called an origami ninja, so I don't know. We'll have to see what that is. And then this is Meat Sweats, which a lot of people seem to like. Uh, he's like a pig, and he apparently sweats meat, which is really weird, so I don't know. Uh, the Splinter is my least favorite. He is just ridiculously huge. I don't even know how he could do a karate kick being that brown, but yeah, he's my least favorite design. Um, and then there's this huge uh, play set, which is uh, 43 inches, um, and then there's even going to be a piece that you can combine with that. And you can see here, it actually goes underneath that playset. So this is going to be one of the biggest playsets probably ever made. Uh, so yeah, that's what we got from Playmates Toys this year. Alright, so <laughs> Playmates Toys. So basically, in the video I do say that they're all about Rise, and that's all they're really pushing. That's not 100% true. They actually are doing Voltron as well. But Rise is the big push. So if you're a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan, and you're around my age, which is, you know, 30, um, you probably are going to be very, I don't know, hot and cold about this show, and I don't blame you, because I am too. Um, 
I've kind of thought about just kind of skipping this show, to be honest with you. It, it's definitely, it was announced before it even went, before we even saw pictures, before we saw pictures of figures or the actual, um, you know, animation art, that it was really going to be geared toward a much younger audience. Uh, now, the last show just ended last year. It was on for about five years. It was a great show. But as the show went on, it definitely got pretty dark, man. Um, they, you know, they killed Master Splinter. Uh, spoilers. Uh, they, they killed a couple people in that show, or a couple mutants in that show. Um, but they also introduced a character in Tales of the TMNT that was killing humans. So it was, it was getting pretty dark. I like that. I definitely like that. I mean, come on. I love that stuff. But for kids, they're not, it's probably not good for them, I guess. Um, so, yeah, so Rise is going to be a totally different, younger audience. Um, I would say adults that are looking forward to it is like, uh, probably one out of ten adults are looking forward to this show. It's just, I'm going by what I'm seeing on forums and social media. It doesn't look that good for this show. Um, I think the biggest struggle they're going to have with it is that they're putting a show directly after a successful show. Um, we've seen them try to do that with Fast Forward, didn't work. Um, you know, Next Mutation didn't work, and this actually kind of reminds me of Next Mutation. Um, and then also the Michael Bay movies didn't really work. Uh, the figures were terrible. The, uh, the movie was just, I don't know, uninspired. It was. Uh, Probably one of the worst Ninja Turtles, uh, you know, anything that I've ever seen. It was just so bad. But, you know, there's, there's got to be somebody that wants to see it. I'm thinking really young kids. Um, so, you know, again, not the knock rise. I mean, I haven't even seen it, and I'm only judging it by the art and the figures. But as far as the collectibles are concerned, I'm passing on all that stuff. So... You know, it's going to be a slack market, so, you know, I don't want to knock anybody that does like it. So, hey, to each, to each their own. We all have our own version that we like, and uh, this is definitely going to be the younger crowd. Um, DC Collectibles, you know, they I think they're having licensing issues with getting some of these things done. So, I don't know what's going on with them, but all they really showed was statues. They had... Uh, you know, a couple different figures. They had one line called Essentials. Um, basically, they're restarting another line of figures, but they're going back to their 7 inch. So they just ended DC Icons, now they're back at DC Essentials. So I don't know, man. Um, if you're a real diehard comic fan and you really like those comic styles, you know, it might be for you. But um, not really into it. I was really hoping for animated series stuff. You know, you only saw a couple expressions packs in that uh, review. So it doesn't look like there's much coming for animated series. I really, I, I like the Gotham City Garage stuff. I think it's very cool. The price point's a little high. And I love that they went to Artist Alley and just, you know, uh, looked for different artists to make PVC statues. Very cool. Chris Uminga, shout out, awesome guy. Um, so I think it's very admirable that they would actually do that. You know, most artists these days, they struggle and, uh, you know, they, they do some amazing stuff and they just don't get recognized like they should. So it's really cool. Um, but as far as figures, really wasn't much to show. So unfortunately, it's just the way it is. Um, so let's take a look at some of the other ones uh, from like Funko, um, a couple others in here. Alright, so taking a look at the Funko offerings, um, I'm not going to show everything, but I do want to start off with these Pennywise Bops. They're actually making the human characters as well as Pennywise, and there's even uh, some plush coming from that. They even have some reaction figures, which I didn't have a cool uh, picture of, but there is a lot coming from the movie It. Um, the next one, of course, is this new Savage World line that they're continuing, and they have the Thundercats license, which these actually look really cool. I like the classic look, and I really think it fits um, Thundercats really well, and you'll finally have a line that you can put Thundercats and, um, you know, He-Man next to each other. Uh, they also have a Conan the Barbarian assortment, which seems to fit very well with the two. Uh, it does look like it's from the movie. It kind of looks like Arnold. But then you have these weird horror figures, which 
I think I'd like them if they were actually in, like, wearing their usual clothes, but what the hell is up with these get-ups, man? <laughs> Uh, I don't know about this line, so a lot from Funko, but definitely some goofy stuff in here. Alright, so taking a look at the Storm Collectibles booth, not a whole lot to go over, uh, but there is some new additions to the Mortal Kombat line and some other things. Um, so first we'll start off with Ermac, which looks really good, um, and I'm not sure if we're going to see any of these ninjas anymore for like uh, mass releases. It seems like they're going to go the exclusive route. And that's the same for the smoke that we see here um, and the rain behind him. But look what we do see. We see Goro. This is a figure we haven't seen in a while, pretty much since they announced the line. Um, a lot of people wondered what happened to him, and we started seeing all these different prototypes. Still no Goro, and bam, now he's here. Uh, so Goro does look like he will be the next Mortal Kombat figure released. He seems to look really uh, well done, all the, the arms are moving, they're attacking, good articulation, they really displayed him, uh, you know, doing all the poses he could possibly do in this display, so it's nice to see that. Uh, now behind him you see Shao Kahn, which is, uh, it should be shipping in March, so if you pre-ordered from Storm, you'll probably have your figures pretty soon, uh, but he looks amazing and I cannot wait to own that figure. But yeah, so it looks like just... Goro is the next thing coming, and I'm happy about that. Uh, also, they announced a DC Injustice license, which is actually Injustice 1 and 2, and you're seeing Lobo and Darkseid from those um, games. Now, it looks like the Lobo, he was actually in uh, the first game, whereas uh, Darkseid's in the new game, so pretty cool looking display. So Hasbro has a ton to offer this year. Uh, just starting it off, you can see there's the Tiger Stripe Wolverine, which has been definitely heavily requested. Looks pretty good. Don't know about any other accessories, but looks great. Um, also, Sabretooth to match that Wolverine, and this looks awesome. I'm so happy to see this. Been wanting a Sabretooth for a while, so yeah, they're, they're really delivering with these uh, Wolverine figures. And then, of course, you have another one for the Rider series, which is Logan. You can even see an interchangeable head with an eye patch. A little bit of a reuse of the Ghost Rider cycle, but hey, it works. It looks great. Um, you have Electra here, which is the classic Electra. Looks so good. I always like this costume. Uh, very happy to see this. It's got her size. Great looking figure. Uh, and then Doc Ock, which has been, again, heavily requested. Haven't really seen one like this since Toy Biz. It's been quite a while. Uh, so this looks pretty good. Trying to figure out if there's bendy wires in there, but haven't really got anything official yet. Um, Spider Pig is in there, and you can see there's two different interchangeable head sculpts for him. So pretty wild looking uh, design. And then for the Venom Wave, you do have a new Carnage figure, which looks good. And we're getting a really nice clear look at that interchangeable head, and I think it looks really good. Uh, no complaints. Now, unfortunately for Venom, that Eddie Brock head is huge. I mean, it is ridiculously big. So, I guess they're still kind of, you know, reworking the sculpt a little bit. The face looks good, it's just way too big. Um, but my favorite line is the Marvel Studios 10 year anniversary line, which you can see. Crossbones. That is one of my most uh, demanded figures from Hasbro for Marvel Legends, so really cool to see him. Uh, great looking interchangeable heads. And the Steve Rogers, you know, Chris Evans head sculpt looks amazing, so I'm happy to see Captain America actually looks like himself. Uh, you can see Thor there, but there's a, there's a Red Skull, um, Iron Man, there's so many different versions of the figures that they kind of missed. So that line is coming out very soon. All right, so Funko and Hasbro, two uh, pretty big shows this year. Funko, I didn't really do a lot with. Um, they just have so much stuff that's hard to cover, and um, I don't really collect a lot of pops. I do have some, um, but Funko's got some cool stuff coming out. Um, uh, unfortunately, I didn't have a picture of the reaction uh, Pennywise figures or it. Uh, they are doing a couple different waves of those, so you can expect those. Um, they have a decent amount of stuff in there. The one that I really was looking at was that Barbarian, uh, the Savage World line. That line could be a hit, but I don't know about them horror figures, man. Those, <laughs> those are so goofy. Uh, it, 
if it would have been in regular style, I think they would have done really good. Just making figures of Jason, Michael Myers. I mean, they got Michael Myers. That's that's cool. Uh, but making them in that style, but what they wear would have been amazing. But in them savage getups, like I don't know. It's so it's so hokey. It just looks so cheesy. Um, it reminds me of when Mezco tried to do like these rat thing figures of the horror icons years ago. But I'm sure somebody's going to be digging them. Um, you know, I might I might pick up one just because it's Jason, but man, it's the goofiest figure I've ever seen. Um, but Hasbro, man, they knocked it all out of the park. They might have the best show. I mean, it, they have got so much stuff. Um, you know, I went over a bunch of it in there in the video. There's a lot more than that. Um, but they actually are bringing a 10 year anniversary MCU line, which I think is gonna be a huge hit for them. Um, I love that Crossbones, so uh, it's really cool to see that they're actually going back and making figures we haven't seen. I'm surprised they didn't do an Avengers Loki. Um, they did a Walmart exclusive years ago when that movie came out, I still have it. Um, but I'm kinda of surprised they didn't go back and do that. Like, Loki from Avengers and Thor, I think that would have been a better set but it is what it is. Uh, but they do have a lot of stuff coming, man. That Tiger Wolverine, um, Sabretooth, the Logan on the motorcycle, Crossbones. Uh, they have a Hawk and a, um, a um, Hawk Buster armor, uh, two-pack. Really cool stuff coming. So uh, if you're a Hasbro fan, if you're a Marvel fan, you'll definitely love this stuff. Um, and it's kind of funny because I feel like Marvel and the comic world is struggling to understand their customers' needs. Um, but I feel like DC and the comic world really gets it. I mean, they do, they have got some great books right now. But then in the figure world, it seems like Marvel is just amazing at doing this stuff. You know, they've got some of the best figures at all different prices, even for adults. Um, and then you have DC, which is just struggling, man. Um, the NECA line of movie figures was going so well for the holidays, and then it's just gone, gone. You know, this year we didn't see anything. Um, it would have been a perfect year for a 25th anniversary Batman Returns, you know, like for Catwoman, uh, Danny DeVito, Penguin, didn't happen. They are done. And then they can't even get the Dark Horse sets out, so. I don't know, man. It's a DC, look at DC collectibles. They have nothing on display, so DC's got to get their shit together this year. Otherwise, they, I don't know, Mayfex. They're a hundred bucks. It's hard to afford. So, uh, but let's take a look at my favorite two from the show. Uh, we have Mezco and NECA Toys. So check this out. All right, so taking a look at some of the offerings from Mezco this year, they got a nice assortment of things. Uh, starting off with this Batman, kind of previewed that last week before Toy Fair started, uh, so we are seeing him in person. Looks pretty good. Um, and then we have the updated uh, look for the Gal Gadot Wonder Woman from Justice League. Face isn't quite as good as I hoped for, but it's nice to see an update on it. Uh, then we have the Ghostbusters, which look fantastic. Uh, these are coming out this holiday season, and they got Slimer in there. I mean, these look really good, so I think these are going to do very well. Um, so the next one we have is John Wick, which I'm very happy about. It's one of my favorites. There's no John Wick figures, and I think he does make a cool action figure. He's probably got a full arsenal of weapons, so I'm looking forward to that one. Um, and then we have Blade. Now this is kind of funny, it's not actually based off the movie, even though it kind of looks like the movie Blade. Uh, obviously the likeness isn't Wesley Snipes, but pretty cool looking figure anyway, I love the coat. Um, then we have a new uh, Cyclops coming, which is that classic style that a lot of people like. There's definitely a little bit of like that redesign Mezco does, but overall it looks really cool. I like that the hair is kind of out of the top. And then my favorite is this Daredevil. I absolutely love this Daredevil. It's that mass vigilante Netflix Daredevil. And I think this just works perfect with the fabric and the, you know, sculpted pieces. Um, and then we have an updated look of Michael Myers, which they did a pre-order on that around Halloween. Uh, he looks really good. And uh, the next one we have is the Alex from Clockwork Orange. Um, we haven't really seen a lot of um, Actually, I think this is the first time they've debuted this figure. Uh, we've just seen the pre-order, but he looks really good. 
Um, and then we have Jason, which I'm kind of hot and cold on. You know, I love Jason figures, but the stitching on here isn't really looking that good, and I question if that mask comes off. So for 80 bucks, competing with NECA, I don't know, we'll see. Um, and then you have King Kong, which is kind of like their return to their 18-inch uh, figures, which I haven't really seen much of those in a while. Um, but they are doing a King Kong. I don't really know what this is based off of, but I don't know. It doesn't really look like King Kong to me. It just looks like a big ape. But I'm really not sure what this is based on. It just doesn't really look that much like King Kong. Pretty cool anyway. Uh, and then we saw some updated LED LDDs. You got uh, Pennywise from the new movie, you have The Nun from The Conjuring, and then you have Michael Myers, and they all look really good. Uh, nice to see that Presents line going. And then finally, they do have some stylized figures coming, Pennywise, Jason looks amazing, Exorcist, Alex. Uh, so great stuff from Esco. So taking a look at NECA's toy fair display, you got a lot of different things here. Uh, you can see here the Kenner aliens, which are looking pretty good. And then you even have human characters from that line, like Apon. He's got his cool No Bugs t-shirt, so pretty cool looking line. Uh, some of these are just really radically designed. I think this one here is called the Snake, uh, Snake Aliens, so he's just really wild looking. Definitely not a lot of reused parts from different lines. This is really its own thing. Um, and then as far as the Predator, you have the Alien vs. Predator uh, arcade game. So you have a little bit of everything, and you can see the Predator is the first assortment. Uh, you even have a uh, Dutch and Lynn two-pack, and you can notice that the Dutch is not just a reuse of Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's actually a different uh, sculpt. And then you also have some of the other figures, some of these we've seen already, uh, just some of the Predators that are coming out very soon, including that Bone Throne that uh, we've been seeing for a while. It looks like they're getting closer and closer to releasing that. That should be coming out um, you know, very soon. And then you also had a new Ultimate Elder. Uh, and you can see there's a couple different head sculpts on here, which look pretty good. Um, so that one should be coming out later in the year. And then getting to video games, you have three different versions of Crash Bandicoot here. Um, all are going to be offered at different times, so you do have a little bit of a choice between which one you like. Um, and then for Gomero del Toro, you also have the Pale Man, and he's actually going to come with a chair. So that should be cool, that should be out later in the year. Uh, and then he had this amazing Dio, which they had the turtles on. Now they're not offering the turtles again, but this Dio is huge and it will be compatible with any line of figures. It's not licensed to any specific uh, license. And apparently it can fit like 20 to 25 figures, no problem. So pretty cool. Uh, for the Mego stuff, you have the Herbert West from Reanimator. That's going to be a pretty popular one. He was fully displayed here. Uh, Freddy, there was actually two different versions. There was like a tuxedo one, and then we have this server uh, version. So they should be coming out this year. And then out of nowhere, we have this Captain Plague from The Fall, and that is very cool. Um, I'm told his eyes will probably light up, and if not, he might just have the type of Freddy thing where the eyes will glow with the light hitting it a certain way. Um, and then you have the Ultimate Gremlin, which looks really good. And this is an unpainted prototype, but you can see the different accessories, and of course he has that Ultimate uh, treatment so you got that nice window box or like the flap that opens and then you can see the figure display so pretty cool one of my favorites is the ultimate part 2 Jason and you can see it's displayed here with the Friday 13th accessories uh, accessory kit which is coming out soon uh, but that Jason will have all new articulation which is great and it is going to come with a removable fabric mask as well as a sculpted mask um, and then out of nowhere, again, we have a Pennywise Ultimate Tim Curry version. Now this is based off the TV series, pretty cool looking. The head sculpts are just wild. I mean, you get a little bit of everything, even this battle damage sculpt. So I think this is going to be a big hit. And one of my favorites, again, is this Pennywise. Now this is based off Bill Skarsgård's movie appearance. And I think this looks fantastic. I mean, again, you have a bunch of different head sculpts. You got that really crazy head sculpt, looks like he's getting ready to like, <laughs> eat an arm or something. But very cool, that should be coming out in August I believe. And then finally you have a quarter scale Jason, something we haven't seen in a long time. So 
great stuff from NECA this year, a lot of horror, so I can't wait. All right, so Mezco and NECA, two really great uh, companies to collect. Uh, I've been collecting them for a long time. Uh, so yeah, they had some good shows. So um, Mezco, they got a decent amount of 112s on display. Cool stuff. Um, if I had one thing to say about it, what's up with the 2019 stuff, guys? This is Toy Fair 2018. What's all this 2019 stuff? Um, so, man, a bunch of these releases just say 2019, and it's just like, come on, I mean, why, why are you even showing this stuff? So, uh, you know, they, they want them pre-orders, they want to keep that, that, uh, that advertising going, they want to sell as many as they can, I get it, I know these are expensive to make, but, you know, advertising stuff a year in advance, kind of stupid. <laughs> uh, oh well, you know, uh... I'm definitely interested in a lot of them. I really like the lines. Um, John Wick, definitely one of my favorites. Um, and that Daredevil, the Mass Vigilante, a very cool figure. Uh, the Jason, I love Jason figures, man. I've got so many Jason figures, but I don't really like that Jason that they showed. And I'm not really surprised because uh, I didn't like the Sideshow version either. And I think it's just because it's so expensive and you don't really seem like you're getting what you know your money's worth. Um, you know, sideshow one, the mask didn't come off. The, they had a couple accessories. I don't know, man. It's just that is like a two hundred dollar figure. Doesn't, didn't seem worth it to me. Uh, so the Mezco one's probably gonna run around eighty bucks. Uh, from what we saw, really didn't see much for anything for display. So it's definitely something we're gonna have to just kind of keep an eye on. If the mask comes off and they kind of go back to maybe reworking the stitching on that shirt, I'll be interested. Um, so for NECA toys, amazing stuff this year. Um, now, I've been collecting NECA for a long time. I you know, love the company. Um, I'm sure some of you guys saw me model the Casey Jones mask recently. Really cool stuff. Uh, you can see it in the back there. Um, the toy fair this year, pretty good. Uh, a lot of horror. So you saw Ultimate Part 2 Jason. Very cool. Um, you saw two different Pennywise figures, Tim Curry and Bill Skarsgård, so I love that. Um, tons of different heads with them. They're kind of going a Chucky route where you get like four different interchangeable heads with these. Um, so just really cool stuff shown. And it was even a quarter scale Jason Part 4, which looks killer. I mean, it looks so good. Um, I just recently bought, uh, actually I got for Christmas, uh, Michelangelo Ninja Turtle. So I might actually consider getting that Jason that I kind of put next to him. I haven't owned a Jason quarter scale since, uh, I guess, the Freddy vs. Jason one. Um, but yeah, it's really cool that they're doing that. And he's got a ton of articulation, so I really like that. Um, also, some of the stuff they showed were some Migos, uh, you know, Herbert West. Um, there was a Captain Blake from The Fog, which was kind of cool. Two different Freddies. Um, I said one was called a server, but he's actually Chef Freddy. Um, and then there was a Tuxedo Freddy. So a decent amount of Mego stuff. Kind of missing um, some of the Jasons though. I really like those Jasons that they made and haven't seen one in quite some time. So it's a little bit overdue. I feel like they're kind of Freddy heavy. I don't think I really need either of the Freddies, but uh, yeah, they're kind of getting a little too many Freddies and not enough Jasons. So I'm hoping that we get a Mego Jason by maybe fall or you know, later in the year. Maybe we'll see something at San Diego. Um, now, Randy did an interview with uh, Pixel Dan, and he actually talked about Ninja Turtles. So, obviously, there was no turtles on display at the show. Um, so, Randy promises that they are working on the Foot Clan and uh, Shredder quarter scale. The Foot Clan is almost done. Um, the Foot Soldier is almost done. And then Shredder shouldn't be too far behind it. So, by San Diego, we should be able to see both of them. Um, also, one thing that he hinted at was that Dimension X set, um, they actually have the fourth character done. So, who knows who it could be? It could be Krang, could be Baxter Stockman, could be Leatherhead, who knows? Either way, I'm definitely interested. Now, that is going to be that arcade style paint, so some people aren't a fan, but. It looks really good, so we'll see what happens with that. They've also um, 
uh, hinted at the San Diego Comic Con will not be um, a continuation of the 87 tunes set. So we could be something seeing something completely different here. I'm actually kind of thinking maybe it's 2003 um, cartoon because 25th year anniversary could be a good year for it. Um, I love to see Casey Jones and uh, April O'Neil in some form um, in one of these sets, but who knows um, if we get one? I would imagine it'd be somewhere along the lines of what we've done already with the four turtles, Shredder, and things like that. So don't really know what it's going to be, but there will be one. And I'm thinking the Dimension X set's going to be a New York Comic Con exclusive. Because that's the only other way they could do it, unless they do some kind of online thing. So, I'm not sure. Um, but that was, uh, oh, also there was a Dio. I want to talk about that. Um, they have a huge Dio. They actually had the Turtles on display in the Dio. And supposedly it holds like 20-some figures at most, so it looks pretty good. Uh, I have no idea what the price point's going to be. I'm kind of scared, but I'm interested at the same point so um so anyway pretty good show uh thanks for watching my review uh, got a lot to look forward to and um you know keep an eye out for any uh news on that turtle stuff i think it's probably gonna be coming maybe around april or may so we'll see uh but thanks for watching my review guys and uh until next time see ya. <laughs>